In this video, I'll be working through the question you can see on the screen from the Cambridge A-Level Maths Paper 1. Specifically, it's Paper 1-1 from the Winter Exams in 2023. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist with all the questions below this video. I'm doing this on a whiteboard. Hopefully it'll be like you're used to your teacher doing. And if you do find this or any of my other videos useful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you like, subscribe, or even share it with a friend that's doing the exam this year or next. In question five, we're given this uh, trigonometric equation and we're asked to express it in a different form. Basically rearrange it. Uh, the form they want has a cosine squared, a cosine, and just a, an integer. So basically they want to turn it into a quadratic. And presumably then in part B we'll solve that. Um, so again, they give us that clue. They want us to look like cosines. Basically they want everything to be in the form of cosines. How do you go about that? Um, I would just pick something to change. Um, the tan x is what would come to my mind. In fact, it's the only easy thing that comes to my mind. Um, so I would write this again, uh, just instead of tan x, I would put sine over cosine. But it's already divided, so sine over cosine would turn into, uh, the 5 would still be there, would turn into cosine over sine. Um, and then the last one st still doesn't change. Okay, the next thing that jumps out to me is it's a sine x, it's a sine x. And thankfully there's a zero here. So it's quite easy to get rid of stuff. We can multiply everything by sine x. That would disappear. That would disappear. I'd left just cosine here. And I'm already thinking ahead that I would have a sine squared here. That can be turned into cosine quite easily. So let's say I do that first. Uh, we would have four sine squared x. So that's this, uh, well, that's a sine squared multiplying here. And then we would have five cosine x. That's a sine squared multiplying here and canceling. Uh, plus two, again, a sine squared multiplying here and canceling equals zero. And again, a sine squared multiplying here and mul anything multiplied by zero is still zero. Okay, last thing, and you do need to, this is very important to remember, I'll write it up here. Uh, sine squared uh, x plus cosine squared x equals one. That should be number one thing. Trigonometry is based on this. So that means sine squared could just be replaced. Uh, sine squared is just equal to one minus cosine squared. Uh, just uh, take cosine squared away from both sides. So we can replace sine squared by one minus uh, cosine squared x. And this is pretty much what they asked us for. We still have to clean it up a little. But basically they asked us for a cosine squared, a cosine and a number. Yeah, we need to clean this up here. Uh, this would be minus four cosine squared. Uh, four times one, we'll put that down here in a moment. Uh, that'll be five cosine x. And this four plus this two will be a six. And that's it, that's the answer to part A, except I wouldn't leave this as the answer. I would write uh, four cosine squared x minus five minus six equals zero. But I, yeah, I see no reason they didn't, yeah, they didn't tell us uh, the integers had to be uh, positive or anything like that. So in fact, they wouldn't all be anyway. So these both are fine. They're both correct. Uh, I personally, I always just put my uh, quadratic as a positive if I can. So uh, that's the answer to part A. Okay, so for part B, um, I haven't wrote it again, but they basically give us the same thing as part A and just ask us now to solve it uh, between x between 0 and 360. But let's not solve that question. That's too hard of a question to solve. Let's solve what we found in part A. We changed that into this. And um, so if we solve that, if we solve this, we solve what they asked for. And that's very common in maths. They ask you to change, change how something looks. And then they say, oh, solve that first thing. So you have to think. Oh, well, let me use the new thing. It's going to be easier. And it will be, because this is a quadratic. We can solve this quadratic. It, uh, it actually factorizes. Not very easy, uh, the factorization. So go ahead and use the minus b formula if you want. But it does factorize. Uh, oh, thank thankfully, I have my notes, so I don't have to think too much about it. Um, I tried 2 and 2, and then 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Couldn't get it to work. Uh, so 4 and 1 is what worked. 
Remember, this is a uh, cosine, but you can ignore the cosine for now. Um, cosine. So four and one, and then it's uh, I guess two and three. Uh, yeah, two here, three here. So that makes an eight, and that makes a three. And you can get eight and three to combine to a five. Uh, eight minus three, or in this case, it's minus five. So minus eight, uh, that'd be a minus and plus three, that would combine to get the first one. It would combine to get the middle one, and this with this. So does the last one work? Just check, three times minus two, six, it works. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the answer to that. And then we can put them equal to zero. We can get cosine x is equal to minus three over four, simply rearranging a bit here. And cosine, uh, cosine x equals two. Now at this point, you would lose a mark if you left this. Like, well, sorry, yeah. let's assume you did the rest of the question, you answered everything, uh, but if you didn't write anything else here, I think, I think you would lose a mark. I think some examiners would probably be nice to you. What they need to see is just a line or not, not possible or something like that. Because remember, cosine x equals two. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need to draw this anyway, so cosine, looks something like this between 0 and 360. This is 1. 2 is all the way up here. Cosine never hits 2. It goes on forever that way. It goes on forever that way. But it never hits 2. Cosine x just can't hit 2. It can't have an answer. So we just ignore that one. But yeah, I have to tell the examiner you're doing that. They might, they might take a mark away. I don't think they actually would. Okay, so the one we're left with, cosine x is equal to minus 3 over 4. That is here. Here's minus one, uh, three over four, somewhere here. We get two answers in this world. Remember, they could have different numbers here. It, often the answer's over here, often the answer's over there somewhere. But now in this world, from our drawing, we get two answers. Put it in a calculator, my calculator at least, maybe you have a better one. My calculator will give me this answer here. And uh, that is, one one thirty-eight point six. You have to figure out the next one. A uh, couple of ways to do it. You could say that's 138 from zero. So it should be the same distance from 360. Um, same distance from 360. So we'll just take 360 minus this and uh, you get two, over here, 221.4. Uh, and that's the answers. Oh, uh, just one warning, uh, your calculator, make sure you're on degrees, not radians. Uh, I, I find self at the start of the question, ask yourself, what's the answer gonna be, degree or radiant? And make sure your calculator has changed then. Because the amount of students who work in the calculator go, what? This, is, uh, this can't be right. Or, or even worse, they don't know this, it can't be right. And you might write down um, whatever that is in in radians, probably uh, like 0 0.5 or something around there. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's it for, yeah, that's it for the whole question. Not too bad of a question, very common one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, have a good day.